All right, let's find the solution of the integral of sine cubed of a, which is just the constant, by x with respect to x. So with this integral, we can't just use the standard power method because the function or the integrand is not just a uh, x to the cubed or x to some power. Our integrand is a function of x to the third power. So we have to transform this integrand into what we call an integrable or integratable form. And we can do that one of two ways. We can use a substitution. Or number two, we can use a trigonometric identity. Okay, the two solutions are fundamentally different, but they should produce the same result at the end. So let's have a go at substitution. So with substitution, we are trying to use the reverse of the chain rule. So what we are trying to do is to get the integrand big F of x into the form of big F of x equals g of u by the derivative of u. And we can do that by writing sine cubed of x equals sine squared of x by sine of x. Okay, let's not forget the constant a in front of the x's. I'm sorry about that. Okay, so by the Pythagorean identity, I can rewrite the sine squared of ax as 1 minus the sine, sorry, the cosine of ax, cosine squared of ax, and leave the sine of ax at the back remaining as it is. And now we can let the function u of x equal the cosine of ax. Then taking the derivative of the function u, we can write du equals negative sine of ax by the constant a. Remember, we have to apply the chain rule to what's in the parentheses by dx. Okay, let's rearrange this a little bit. Let's write this as negative du equals a by sine x, sine of ax dx. Actually, let's write this as 1 on a, negative 1 on a du equals sine of ax dx. So the integrand sine cubed of ax is equal to, let's put the substitution u in, 1 minus u squared, because u equals cosine of ax, by the sine of ax. Now integrating both sides with respect to x, this trailing sine of ax by dx can be rewritten as negative 1 on a du, according to our equation here, and in parentheses 1 minus u squared remains. Let's put this a bit more neatly as negative 1 on a, because it's a constant that can come out in front, by the integral of 1 minus u squared du. So this is now just a simple power integral with the result 1 integrates to u minus u squared integrates to u cubed divided by 3. And of course we have to add the integration constant c. All right, so we've solved the integral and came up with the answer in terms of u's. So we have to substitute the cosine back in to get the complete answer. So putting cosine back in, we have 1 so negative 1 on a outside of cosine of ax minus cosine cubed of ax divided by 3 plus the integration constant c. Okay, let's tidy this up a bit further. Let's put this 1 on a back in, back into these brackets. So if we do that and expand this in, we have cosine cubed of ax on 3a minus cosine of ax divided by a plus the integration constant c. Okay, so that's the integral of sine cubed of ax using the method of substitution. What about now using the trigonometric identity? Well, the idea behind this is power reduction. So we have the integrand f of x equals sine cubed of a by x. Using a triple angle formula, we can get this cubic power down to a singular power. 
which means that we can just use the standard sine integral to get our solution. So the triple angle formula is sine of 3 theta equals 3 sine theta minus 4 sine cubed theta. So we'll just substitute the thetas for ax. Now if we rearrange to get this cubic term on its own, we should get sine cubed of ax equals 3 quarters of sine of ax minus 1 quarter of sine of 3ax. Okay, so now we can integrate both sides again with respect to x. And this gives us 3 quarters sine of ax integrates to negative cosine of ax. But we've got to make sure we apply the reverse chain rule by dividing by the coefficient in front of the x. So we have by 1 on a minus quarter remains sine of 3ax integrates to negative cosine of 3ax. And the same thing divided by the 3a coefficient in front of the x and of course plus the integration constant c. Let's tidy this up a bit. Okay, negative and a negative creates a positive, so let's put the cosine 3ax term out the front. 4 times 3 is 12, so it's divided by 12a minus, so we've got rid of this minus, 3 cosine of ax divided by 4 times a is 4a plus the constant c. Okay, so for the second method, we got the result, the sine cubed of ax equals cosine of 3ax divided by 12a minus 3 times cosine of ax divided by 4a plus c. For the first method, we got the sine cubed, integral of sine cubed of ax equals cosine cubed of ax divided by 3a minus cosine of ax divided by a plus c. So are these two equivalent? Well, we can find out if we apply the triple angle formula to this cosine cubed term here. So for cosine, the triple angle formula is cosine of 3 theta equals 4 by cosine cubed theta minus 3 cosine theta. So again, replacing the thetas by ax, And rearranging for the cubic term, we have cosine cubed of ax equals one quarter of cosine of 3ax plus three quarters of cosine ax. So subbing this for the cosine cubed term, we have the integral of the sine cubed of ax equals one fourth of the cosine of 3ax plus three quarters of cosine ax all over 3a minus cosine of ax on a plus c. Unfortunately, maths can be pretty tedious at times. So this gives us cosine of 3ax on 12a plus cosine of ax divided by a, divided by 4a, I should say. So this is simply separating out the two fractions and combining the top and bottom. And then we have minus cosine of ax divided by a plus c. Okay, so cosine of 3ax over 12a can stay as it is. Now, if we combine these two, we should end up with 3 cosine of ax divided by 4a. And you can verify this for yourself because we simply need a common denominator for both of the terms. And that means multiplying the top and bottom of the second term by 4. And finally, we have the integration constant on the end. So we can see that both of the solutions are equivalent. So there you have it, the integral of the sine cubic of ax. It took us a while to get there, but you have two ways of doing it. So if you found this video useful, please hit that like button and please subscribe for more videos that may help you with your studies. And don't forget to share this with your friends.
I appreciate any little support that you can give because helping me will help you. So if you're able to tip, the instructions are in the description below. Feel free to ask any questions by using the comment section below. Until next time, best of luck with your math studies and thanks for watching.